This is the start of our series on the concepts of probability, an essential topic to understand machine learning. Even if we don't realize it, we all have an intuitive grasp of some key concepts of probability. We constantly assess the world around us, subconsciously predicting potential dangers and taking actions to avoid them. For example, we instinctively duck when we hear an insect buzz around our head. But our predictions aren't limited to just subconscious danger avoidance. We also plan and act to maximize the chances of desired outcomes, like preparing for a job interview. Not only can we predict specific outcomes, but we can also estimate the likelihood of each possible result. Suppose you're shown a picture of a cat that resembles a dog and a wolf. You might guess it looks 70% like a cat, 20% like a dog, and 10% like a wolf. Similarly, when asked to predict the height of a randomly selected student from our class, most of us would intuitively expect a person of average height, rather than the tallest individual. This is because most students in the class have an average height. We also use past events to predict future ones, like expecting thunder after seeing lightning. On a lighter note, we generally find news about expected events boring and information about unlikely events more interesting. These everyday examples demonstrate our natural understanding of some fundamental probability concepts. These concepts help us quantify uncertainty. In other words, they enable us to represent uncertainty numerically. Machine learning models also work with numbers. They take numerical inputs and produce numerical outputs, as explained in our previous video on what is a machine learning model. A model's learning is also captured in numbers. That is, models learn by adjusting certain numerical values, known as parameters or weights, based on the data they are given. This adjustment process continues until the model can make the most accurate predictions possible. So, being able to express uncertainty numerically is essential for machine learning. Now, let's look at a basic operation we often perform, averaging. Suppose you're given a set of numbers, which are the outcomes of an experiment, and you need to find the average. You might sum up all the values and divide by the total number of observations. But what if we consider the frequency of each outcome? We derive at the same average value, but with an additional insight, the fraction of times a particular event occurs can help predict its future occurrence. This process of assigning a fractional value to each possible outcome of an experiment is essentially what a probability distribution does. It's a function assigning fractional values to each possible outcome. All these fractional values sum to one, representing the whole. While dealing with averages or probability distributions, we need to keep in mind these two points. First, as we increase the number of observations, the average gets closer to the true average. Second, the probability distribution we estimate gets closer to the true distribution with more observations. These facts explain why training a machine learning model with large amounts of data is more effective than using smaller datasets. The model can learn the true underlying distribution better with more data.